Hello, my friends. I hope you are all safe and healthy and just taking care of yourselves. I know it has been a hot minute since I've uploaded a video, but I managed to scrape together some creativity and I'm going to show you how I made this tiger slash tiger king themed cake. So let's just get right into it. I've cut myself out a 7 inch cake board and I'm just taping that down to a larger cake board so it's not going to wiggle around on me. I baked off some 7 inch cakes that I'm going to be stacking up with some vanilla buttercream and I wanted this cake to be fairly tall so I ended up with about 7 layers. With my serrated knife, I'm just going to go around and take a little bit off the sides because I want to make sure there's a small gap between the cake and the edge of that cake board. Once she was good to go, I'm adding some more vanilla buttercream on the outside, just a thin layer to lock in all of those crumbs, and then I'm going to pop my cake into the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill. When I could touch my finger to the buttercream and it was nice and firm, I added another thick layer all around the outside of my cake and I'm going to be using my Pro Froster today just because it makes it really easy for me to get a nice level top and straight sides. You can just use a bench scraper for this, you don't need the Pro Froster, not sponsored. This just makes it really easy, especially with a square cake where you want to have nice sharp clean angles. I have an in-depth video on the Pro Froster that I will link below if you want to check that out but I'm just going around the sides and filling in any little pockets or scruffy spots with some more buttercream and then just scraping that back. I'm using that cake board at the bottom as a guide so as I'm scraping I'm making sure that it's straight up and down and butting up right against that cake board and this is just going to ensure that all of my sides are nice and even. Square cakes and rectangle cakes are especially tricky. It's one of those things where you're going to get out of it how much you put into it. It took me probably about 45 minutes altogether of scraping and reapplying buttercream and scraping again until I was finally happy with it. And then I popped my cake in the fridge to chill for about an hour. You want to make sure it's really set and really firm. So now I'm ready for fondant. Because my cake is so tall, I'm not going to attempt to try and cover this in one piece. You can do that with square cakes if you'd like, but I just knew it was going to be a massive pain in the butt, so I'm going to panel my cake. I'm rolling some white fondant out on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick, and I'm going to start with the top of my cake, so I'm just draping a piece big enough to cover the top and then smoothing that down with my fondant smoother. I'm adding a piece of parchment paper on top as well as a cake board and then I'm going to very quickly just flip this over so it's upside down. There's going to be a lot of flipping for this cake. I'm using a sharp long knife and butting that up to the cake as close as possible and cutting straight down. This ensures that I'm not cutting my fondant at an angle so when I go to add my side pieces of fondant it's going to be smooth and tucked together really nicely. If you try to use like an X-Acto knife where the handle kind of gets in the way, you're not going to be able to cut straight up and down, you're going to cut that fondant at an angle. I put my cake back in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes between each panel just so my buttercream stayed nice and cold and then I repeated that process for each side. I made sure to cover the back and then the front of the cake last because even though you can hide the seams, they are still there and I want to make sure that the front piece of fondant is just nice and smooth and the seams are left for the side pieces. I really hope that made sense. You could just add the front panel and paint directly onto the cake, but this is a tutorial and it's kind of a weird angle for me to show you how I painted it. So I left the panel on my silicone mat and I'm going to paint it like this. I traced out the rough dimension of my cake and then I cut that away with my X-Acto knife, just leaving a little bit of extra room on all four sides. 
I have a template that I'm using and I will link that down below. And with one of my fondant tools, I'm just tracing over some of the main features because painting does not come naturally to me and I don't really have the ability to just magically know where the eyes and the nose are gonna sit. So this is really gonna help me make sure my tiger doesn't look really derpy. I mixed together some food coloring gels with some food grade alcohol and I'm going to have everything listed below in depth so you know exactly what I'm using for what. This painting is going to be all about layers. I'm going for a watercolor vibe. So I'm first laying down light green and light pink for the eyes and the nose and then a really light layer of orangey brown all around the forehead and down around the snout. This first layer is really just me trying to map out the general shape of the head and where I'm laying down most of my orange color. So now I'm gonna start building up some depth around the nose and the forehead especially, just using my picture as a reference. This watercolor style is really forgiving. You know, if you add too much, then you can use a clean cotton swab and just dab it away or some clean paper towel. That's why I really like this style because I am not naturally a painter. And I know when I say that, you guys are always like, don't be so down on yourself. And I'm not really meaning it like that. I'm just saying that I have to work a lot harder to get the result that I want. So I really appreciate techniques like this where if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world and all the work you're putting into it isn't immediately ruined. But also you guys are so sweet and you always make me feel so wonderful when I do cakes like this and I sincerely appreciate it. I wanted to get going on the eyes, so I'm adding some more green and then where the pupil's going to be, I'm going to add a really light layer of brown around that. And again, just using my clean cotton swab to blow out that color a little bit. I don't want any harsh lines. I want it all to meld together. I'm not going to talk you guys through this whole process because I think you're going to be able to get a pretty good idea of what I'm doing just by watching. So just enjoy this nice soothing montage. So here he is all finished. I let him dry completely before I tried to add him to my cake because I didn't want to have any smudgies. And I just very carefully placed him, trying to get him as straight as possible. And then just like my other side, I gently flipped him over and just trimmed it down.
I thought some emerald green on the sides would be a nice contrast, so I stippled that color on. First one layer, I let that dry and then added another layer to darken it. And then I scrunched up a piece of paper towel and just dabbed that all over the place. And just the texture of the paper towel kind of rubbed off and I liked the way that it looked, so I kept it like that. I kept the top bare, I just brushed it with a little bit of shortening and then I'm adding some gold leaf. Now gold leaf, <laughs> gold leaf can be a bit of a pain in the butt to work with. It's very delicate so you have to be careful. I just tried to adhere it to the cake as best I could and then used a fluffy brush to smooth it down. It took me a couple tries to get the entire top covered but I did eventually succeed. For the green sides, I kept that gold leaf pretty solid right at the top and then just added a couple smaller pieces so it flaked down. I did the same thing for the tiger, but I did add a little bit less. I wanted to have just a smidge of gold framing around the top. I don't want to take away from the tiger itself and it should adhere pretty good on its own, but if you find the gold leaf just is not coming off your fingers, you can brush a little bit more shortening and it shouldn't mess up your painting at all. So this was the cake done. You could absolutely just leave it like this, but it is a Tiger King themed cake. So I found this little leafy crown at Michael's and it just worked and I liked the way it looked. So I popped it on there, but you absolutely don't need it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try very hard to get some more tutorials out to you guys. It's a little tricky to get materials right now, but I'm going to do my best. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.